welcome everybody. I'm Gretchen Winters. I'm the uh, Director of Marketing for Birch Travel. And just really want to welcome you all on behalf of Birch Travel and Pegasus Travel for joining us tonight. Um, as Mary Margaret said, it's be great when we can get back to traveling. And today you're going to be able to kind of go out and dream about uh, river cruises with AMA Waterways, which is a fantastic um, way to see uh, parts of Europe and um, on the beautiful rivers. Um, so again, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Mary Margaret, who is our account manager for AMA Waterways, and she'll kind of take you through some of the um, itineraries, talk about the ships, and get you all excited about hopefully getting on a <laughs> river cruise yet this year. We're going to think positive. So I'll turn it over to Mary Margaret, and then um, I'll jump back on and kind of Re recap on how you can um, contact your Birch advisor to um, have any questions answered or to uh, follow up on availability. So take it away, Mary Margaret. I will mute myself and let okay. you have it. Well, thank you so much, Gretchen. And uh, if you have questions, you could, um, if, if, Gretchen, if Gretchen wants to look into the chat box or I don't mind you interrupting me, it will not throw me off my game. Uh, if you have a question or you could save it till the end and um, but I'd be more than happy to answer any of the questions. And as Gretchen said, we are very positive that we will be sailing these beautiful rivers this year. All right. I am just going to, to um, put this away so I can see my whole ship. Now, what you're looking at is the Amaterto, one of our signature twin balcony ships. Uh, she holds actually 164 passengers, but she is docked in Vilshoven. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful German town where, as I will explain with one of my slides, we have an Oktoberfest. No matter what time of the year we arrive in Wilshofen. So let's get started with this. I'm going to give you kind of an overview of um, waterways, if I can find my little pointer here. Where am I? Oh, here we are. We are family owned and operated, and we have been since we were founded in 2002. The three families that are that own us are Rudy Schneider. He's our co-founder, our president, but what's also, he is our architect. He has designed all of our ships, all right? And he's known in the industry as the godfather of river cruising, all right? Christine Karnst, another co-founder and our executive vice president. And our third owner and co-founder was Jimmy Murphy. And Jimmy unfortunately passed away in 2014, but his son Gary has taken the realms as a co-owner and he's our senior vice president. I point these three people out to you uh, because they are hands-on owners. They just don't sit in the white ivory tower dictating to us what to do. They, they show up on the ships unannounced to make sure that everything is going well. It, it would not be unusual for you to be having breakfast and them ask if they can join. Um, so again, there, we want to welcome you into our AMA family. Looking at this uh, slide, on the right, you see our ships, right? We, have, we will have a total of 25 ships totally. And all these ships that you're looking here are paid for. They're ours, we own them. The last 10 ships, as Rudy's quote states, we paid for in cash. So you're working with a financially sound company when you're working with Burst Travel and they're putting you on an AMA Waterways cruise, all right? And one of the things I would like to point out, besides the fact that the AMA Siena is being put in this year, she was supposed to be put in last year, and the AMA Lucia is scheduled for this year, and she will be put in mid-spring, and we're putting in the Amadilia, which is our Egypt ship. And... 2010, when we first put in the, the twin balcony ships of the Amabella and the Amaverte, those two ships have actually been gutted. So they're actually brand new ships. So there'll be a 2010, 2020 next to their name, all right? So we haven't been just sitting around doing nothing with our ships. We've been reconditioning them. Well, where do we go? We do all the rivers of Europe, basically, except for the Elba, even though Christine would love us to do the Elba because number one, yes, the scenery is beautiful along the Elba, but it's too unpredictable. And 
Rudy says it's just not fair to our guests. But we do the Doro. We have two beautiful ships on the Doro. We do five wonderful itineraries in France. And we have our four smaller ships, which are what I, what I like to call is our original recipe ships that are only 144 passengers. Uh, they're French balcony. Those are in France, plus the Emma Christina, which we've moved there this past, uh, over the year. And she will start sailing the colors of Provence in France. But we do the Danube, we do the Rhine, we do the Mosul, but we also do Vietnam and Cambodia, right? On the Mekong, which we started in 2009. We've added Thailand as a pre or a post to give you a little bit more choices, right? In 2013, we started Africa. In our Africa program, if you do not have this on your bucket list, I highly recommend that you sit down and talk to one of the Bush associates because I wanna tell you, this is not only a land, it's a cruise, it's a safari, okay? So you have, we go into Cape Town, Johannesburg, we fly you to Botswana, you spend four nights on the beautiful Zambezi Queen. It's a 14 suite, 28 passenger ship on the Chobe River, right? Then we go into uh, Victoria Falls, and then you've chosen your safari, whether it be South Africa in Kruger, East Africa in uh, Tanzania. It's a wonderful, beautiful way to see Africa. And in 2021, this September, I am so excited. We are starting Egypt. With Egypt, we start, uh, we have Cairo. We go into a pre or a post if you'd like. A pre is Dubai or uh, Jordan and a post is Israel. So again, it's a beautiful itinerary and a beautiful brand new ship, the Amadilia, 68 passengers. Okay. But why? I'm gonna give you some reasons why you should travel and cruise with us and Bursch travel, okay? Number one is our excursions. We give you choices, not options. Choices are free, options will cost you money, okay? Every time we stop, I could be once, twice, three times, your tours are included. And then, but you're going to have to make some choices, all right? So for an example in Cologne, you may want to do a bike tour because all of our ships, except for the Doro and on the Mekong, have 26 bicycles, okay? You may want to do a bicycle tour. You may want to do a hiking excursion. You may just want to do a walking, a walking excursion with us where you have to choose between being a gentle walker, a regular walker, or what I call my power walkers, or you may want to choose a culinary tour. And our culinary tours, well, let me tell you, in, in Cologne, for an example, and I'm going to show you some beautiful pictures of Cologne, but in Cologne, you go into this, you have a little walking tour, then you go into this wonderful restaurant, and you have potato pancakes, applesauce, and gros beer, and that, the gros beer is, that is where the, it's made, is in Cologne, right? So, and we provide you with our Quiet Fox headset. So that takes you from not being up close and personal with your tour guide social distancing, okay? And we also give you the option, because if you want, right, if you would like to just do a non-guided tour, but you wanna be, just go up to the desk and say, I don't really wanna do a tour guide tour. I would like to do my own ex exploration. And with that, you have, we give you a map, some highlights of what you should see, and then when you need to be back at the ship. Because if you're not back at the ship on time and we leave, you'll be Ubering it to the next. Again, as I mentioned, the bike tours. And you could take the bike out yourself, just sign up for it, or you could be part of our bike tours itself, right? And all the bike paths run along the rivers in Europe, so you can't get lost. And if you're worried about our bike tours being too strenuous, well, they go anywhere from three miles, five miles. I think the longest mile, uh, bike, uh, that bike hike that we do is probably about 15 miles, so it's not that long. But it's fun because what I love about our bike tours is that we stop at these small little cities and towns on our route. And we have maybe a glass of wine, some beer, um, you know, a pastry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, after we have, a, have our bike tour, we have to have 
a wellness coordinator. And every single one of our ships has a wellness coordinator. And we do aerobics, tai chi, yoga, beautiful sun deck. Yes. But if the weather isn't conducive, we open up our lounge area, move all the furniture, and we have our programs there. Another thing with us is that every single one of our ships has a fitness center. So fitness classes are also done there, okay? And if you wanna take a routine home with you, since our wellness coordinators are licensed in Europe, they will be more than happy to sit down with you and set a whole program for you to continue on your, when you get home. But I love talking about our food, I really do, because it's fresh, it's locally sourced, Everything is made on board, except for our ice creams. And we get that from a Belgian dairy, but we even make our sorbets on board, all right? But our breads, oh, I love our breads, especially at breakfast. Now, the, one of the things that have changed because of COVID is our buffets. We no longer have buffets on our ships, right? So we have, we've always had menu service with lunch and, and breakfast on our buffets, but now it's all menu service, but we will have stations, you know? They will have, like we have an egg station for breakfast. For lunch, we may have a, uh, a spaghetti station, a pasta station, a sushi station, etc. So they'd be stations, right? For you to enjoy your, what you would like, as well as what's on the menu, okay? Now, we still offer our sparkling wine at breakfast. So you could start off with your mimosa or just a glass of sparkling wine. Remember you're on holiday. Lunch and dinner, we offer complimentary free flowing beer, wine and soda. And I want to tell you the wines are, are fabulous. They're red or white, you have a choice or you can both, it doesn't matter. Um, they're changed on a nightly basis and they're regional wines, okay? And please do not be afraid to take that glass of wine or that beer outside of the dining room and up to our lounge, up back to your stateroom, or even up to our sun deck. We don't stop you at the door. Now, every single itinerary, every single cruise will have a Shen dinner. And Shen is an, an association, it's a foodies association, actually, is what it is. It was started back in the 12th century, I believe. It lay dormant for a number, a number of years, and it was brought back to this, uh, into vogue back in the 50s. And it's quite popular, actually, not only in the United States, but also within Europe. And so we have one night, a special Shen dinner. Rudy was actually inducted into Shen back in 2010. Okay. So that's a lovely dinner. And our dinners are menu driven. They always have been, but you have choices. You usually have three choices, sometimes four choices, but you always on the bottom of the menu, we always have a filet, salmon or chicken breast with a Caesar salad. And at every single meal, you can order our French fries. They're delicious, right? And if you have a dietary restriction, we just need to know that ahead of time. So you tell your, your advisor with Birch what it is, and it's noted. And I'm going to tell you, uh, sometimes our chef, depending upon, you know, we always have the gluten-free, always. But we'll sit down with you and say, this is what we're serving tonight. This is what we're serving tomorrow, et cetera, and what, if it works. We also are known for our chef's table. It's alternative dining for you in the evening. Uh, small, intimate, right? My, it varies anywhere depending upon ship, but it could be anywhere from 20, 22 to 26 to 28 passengers. My Ama Magna does have 36 because it is a, a, a larger ship, but um, it is five courses, wine paired, right? And there is no upcharge. All you have to do is when you get on board, unpack, get kind of your first or second night, go up to the front desk and say, I'd like to have dinner there either Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It doesn't matter, okay? It is complimentary. And as I mentioned, five courses, wine paired. And as you can see, the chef cooks right in front of you. We're very proud of this award. It's the Green Award. The Ama Cristina was the first river cruise ship to receive the Green Award. When Rudy designs our ships, he designs them thinking about what kind of carbon footprint are we leaving our future generation? Our fleet is so fuel efficient that we probably spend more money on our 
um, bandwidth than we do on fuel, right? Now, since Madama Christina received the Green Award back in December of 2019, every single ship of ours has received that award. We're very proud of that. Let me talk a little bit about my ships, okay? They're known for our twin balconies. They're 443 feet long and 37 feet wide. My smaller ships are 360 feet wide. I'm sorry, 360 feet long and 37 feet wide. So they, you know, they hold they hold 144 passengers. My seven newest ships of my twin balconies hold 154 passengers. So we have 164 or 154 passenger ships that are twin balconies, right? And my twin balconies all have swimming pools and jacuzzi as well. So bring your bathing suit. Whether it's even the Christmas markets, bring your bathing suit. But our this is what a twin balcony looks like, all right? You have your French balcony, so you'd be sitting inside, open the French doors, have some fresh air, or you'd be sitting on your veranda. One of the other things that happened with COVID is that you will now have room service. If you choose to have breakfast, lunch, or dinner in your stateroom, it is available for you, okay? The beds on all of our, every single one of my ships can be either put together or apart, depending upon how you feel about who you're traveling with. We provide lots of places to plug in as far as USB ports. So you've got two USB ports at the, at the United stand. You've got USB ports behind that Apple TV. And I wanna tell you that Apple TV is not only your TV and music. It's your first run Hollywood movies on demand, complimentary, as well as your internet with a keyboard and a mouse. But our, all of our ships are Wi-Fi and as I mentioned earlier, we spend more money on bandwidth. You can be sitting anywhere on our ship and be connected to the world, right? All of my twin balcony cabins have mini fridges. They're stocked with as much mini bottles of water as you would like. It starts with three each, but if you want 12, they're complimentary. And you see that drawer on the right? I call that my magic drawer because in that drawer, you will have a corkscrew, bottle opener, and two wine glasses. You're in Europe, you're on tour, okay? You're in a shop, you see a beer that you can't get in the States or a bottle of wine, which are many that you can't get in the States, purchase it, bring it on board. We don't stop you. We're not one of the big boys, okay? So we also have connecting cabins. On my seven newest ships, okay, I have 12 connecting cabins. So if you would like to be close to your friends and family, request one with your Birch advisor. And we also have triples and quads. My triples are in my 235 square foot cabins. And my, my quads are in my suites, which are 350 square feet. Okay. All my suites on every single one of my ships has double sinks, walk-in showers, as well as a bathtub, right? So that's a unique about the suites itself. But my cabin sizes range anywhere from my totally French balcony ships of 170 square feet and my twin balconies at 210, 235, or 350. Lots of space. But let's, let's go away. Let's try and travel this year, all right? So we're going to visit the historic rivers of Europe. And we're going to start on the Rhine, the Main, and the Mosul, all right? And let us start in Basel. And these are all the beautiful cities that we will touch, right? It's depending upon the itinerary that you select, right? So starting in Basel, beautiful, beautiful city, you have choices of doing a pre or a post, right? Going from, if you are you doing starting embarking in Basel, you can do our Zurich, Lucerne, Basel, or you can even do Lake Como, right? pre or post, okay? Then as we're traveling on the Rhine, we're gonna be in Berge. And this is kind of a gateway city. It's in the Alsace region, but it's a gateway city to Freiburg as well as Riquelme. And when I talk about my tours, you will have many choices, bike tours, hiking excursions, wine tastings. You also have, obviously, walking tours. So 
from bearish, you will have a choice between bearish, you have Freiburg. And this is the, I believe it's called the, the Munster Cathedral. And it's got the most beautiful spires, as they say, in all of the world. Well, I don't know about that, but that's the little connotations of this particular cathedral, right? And it's kind of the, also the gateway to the Black Forest. And Rickwilder. This is a 16th century old city that has maintained its feel. You, as you're walking into the city, you feel like you are there in the 16th century. And it is the city that actually Walt Disney um, based Sleeping Beauty on. So it's, it's quite a lovely little city. And then we head to Strasbourg. Uh, it is France now. It started off when it was first discovered and founded, all right, in the Alsace. It's actually the capital of the Alsace region, Strasbourg. And it started off as Germany. Then it became France. Then it went to Germany again. But now it is France. And one of the reasons, Strasbourg, all right, with Strasbourg, you have a beautiful Christmas market. And you have that because it started off as Germany. You know, France does not have... Their cities in France, they don't have the beautiful Christmas, huge Christmas markets that Germany, Austria, and Switzerland have, or even Hungary, okay? Some of the other um, southern Danube uh, cities. But this Strasbourg does, and it is lovely. And again, you'll have some choices in Strasbourg of doing some wine tasting, because you're in the Alsace region. Oh my goodness, the wines here are lovely. Or you could do a bike tour. And again, we, have, we don't sail into Heidelberg or Sire. We, we have to bus there, but you'll have your choice of either doing Heidelberg or Sire. And Heidelberg, of course, you've got the castle and you could do the philosopher's hike. And that's a little bit more strenuous, but if you're into hiking and biking, it's a, it's, it's a, no, it's a no brainer, all right? Or have a tour of Heidelberg or go into the castle itself. And if you go into Sire, you have, you'll see the oldest Romanesque church in Germany, okay? But then as we're sailing, we're going to sail into Cologne. And there's so many world, UNESCO World Heritage sites on the way on, in the Rhine area. It's just amazing. Like the, the Cathedral of Cologne is a UNESCO World Heritage site. And in Cologne, as I mentioned earlier, we can do a culinary tour. It's lots of fun. We go into this this restaurant, and it, we have the applesauce and the and the beer and the and the pat, potato pancakes. And for us, and we also give you enough time on a walking tour if you wish to climb those spirals and see the entire region. And then, of course, we have the Rhine Gorge, and the Rhine Gorge in and of itself is a UNESCO World Heritage. Uh, site and you will have probably two to two and a half hours journey on the Rhine Gorge and your cruise uh, manager will give you some beautiful dissertations on the castle, the history of the area uh, as we sail along it. It's absolutely amazing and every time I've done it I see something else, something different. So it's not just a one-time thing. You have to do it more than once. But this is one of my favorite rivers. It's the Moselle. It is a beautiful, beautiful river, right? And the Moselle has got the best wines, right? And you look at the vineyards here. Every time I'm on this river, I look and I say, how do they possibly pick those wines, those grapes rather? Because it's so steep, right? I mean, gravity to me makes them fall. Well, they don't, obviously. The Moselle River is beautiful. And as we travel on the Moselle, you will go and be in, in mind the in St. Stephen's Church, the, the Machigal windows. And you know, during the war in this cathedral uh, in St. Stephen's Church, they took those windows out and hid them um, so they would not be destroyed. They are beautiful. And we go to Kokum. Well, you could do a couple of things in Kokum. You have a walking tour of the castle, or you could do a bike 
You can actually bike up to the castle if you so desire. Okay. But one of the wonderful things you can do is you can get the Kolkham mustard. And it, it, it also learn some beautiful recipes in the shops that we visit. All right. And you know, one of the things you need to do when you travel that I have learned over the years is I put my have my open my suitcase, I put bubble wrap in my suitcase. Then I put my clothes and then I put the bubble wrap over my clothes because if I'm gonna buy cocoa mustard, I'm not just gonna buy one and I'm gonna wrap it in my bubble wrap. And I always throw some um, you know, tape into it, whether it be duct tape or regular masking tape so that I can tape it up. Just kind of a hint. And of course the vineyards. Now with the Moselle, of course they're known for the Rieslings. But did you know that there is a beautiful dry Riesling? So if you're not into sweet wines like me, I'm really not. I discovered dry Riesling and it is oh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So you have choices. And then we'll visit Bamberg along the way, right? And again, a beautiful town. So, oh, these beautiful little towns are wonderful places, not only to tour, but to sit and have a cup of coffee, you know, have a pastry, um, have a pretzel, all right, whatever. Um, but they are just, the, they're full of history. And then of course we go into Würzburg. And did you know that those, they, they sit on that bridge and drink wine because there's a winery right next to the bridge. <laughs> yes, we, there's the castle up there that we do have on several occasions. We've gone up there and had a concert and had wine tasting, but also what's fun during a beautiful day, go into the, the wine shop of the, the winery and just get a couple, of, get a bottle of wine with you and whoever you're with and sit on the bridge and enjoy. And then we come to Amsterdam, where most of the disembark, we either embark or disembark, right? And Amsterdam is such a beautiful city. I highly recommend that if you're going to come there as a pre, stay a couple of days, right? Or even as a post. They've got beautiful museums. They've got also some wonderful places that you can learn how to be an expert beer pourer, like myself. Went to the Heidelberg, uh, the Heineken Museum, sorry and learned how to be a beer pourer. Hmm, yes, that's something for my resume, right? But we give you a canal tour, you'll get a city tour, and there's various different cities tours. You know, there's a beautiful Jewish quarter in Amsterdam as well. Now, if you want to see the Anne Frank Museum, your travel advisor at Bursch has to get your tickets ahead of time. Otherwise, you're gonna stand in line and you're not gonna be able to enjoy Amsterdam, believe me. Now, one of the things that you'll be able to do if you're going to travel on the Rhine and going to Amsterdam with us anyway, is the Floriade. The Floriade will be there from April 9th to October 15th, right? It's a 10 years, it comes every 10 years. And, but we have every, every sailing that we offer in 2022 will offer the Floriade. We have tickets, right? So just kind of an FYI. Now we're gonna do the Danube. We're gonna do the upper Danube, but there's an upper Danube and there's a lower Danube. And yes, as you hear in the background, it's my poor little dog who you know, wants some attention. I'm so sorry. But let's start in Passau, one of my beautiful favorite cities. It's the Paris of the East, you know? It is a beautiful walking city. It's a great place to start your journey. Now, if you, you know, if you are going to do the Danube, you can arrive in Munich and you can start in Nuremberg or you can start in Vilsoven and fly into Prague, right? So that's kind of, uh, kind of looking at the map, depending upon, and of course, Munich is a fabulous city to be in. So with one of the things I need to talk to you about is if you do a pre and post with Armour Waterways is you will meet your cruise manager at your hotel in your, at, in your pre, right? Your cruise, cruise manager will be there to uh, welcome you. You'll have your breakfast included. You'll have a city tour included. And on the pre and the post, we do offer optional tours. Many people don't wanna do an optional tour. Many people just wanna enjoy um, the city themselves, all right? But 
your, your cruise manager will take you from your pre to the ship and then to the post, All right? So you have one cruise manager for your entire journey. Yes. Then from Prague, from Prague we will travel to Vilsoven. And Vilsoven, as was the city that you saw in the first slide, the very introduction slide, well, this beautiful, beautiful city has our Oktoberfest. Every time we are there, we, whether we start there or we embark there, it's disembarked there. Uh, we have an Oktoberfest. There's a big tent that's a permanent tent. We have an umpapa band in a sense. We have the beer queen. And I know you think it's silly. And everybody who goes into the tent goes, oh yes, all right, the beer, you have a beer, you have a pretzel, right? Or two beers and two pretzels, whatever. And they want you to dance. When you go, I'm not gonna do that. There's no way. Uh -huh. By the end of the evening, everybody's dancing. That's how much fun it is. So yes, that's Oktoberfest. Well, then from on the Danube, from Vilsa, when we will travel to Passau. And in Passau, you have, Again, some choices. You could do the bike tour. You can do a hiking excursion, which is a great hike. I love that hike because it's once you get up there, you can actually see the whole, whole region. Okay. Or you can do a walking tour. And no matter what you do, you have to go to St. Stephen's Church because St. Stephen's Cathedral has the, the largest organ in Germany. Right, it is, and it plays every day at noon. So if we're there at noon, you will hear it play. But again, it's a beautiful place. And this is actually, this is kind of the hike where you're, just, you're up there and you're looking at the whole region on the, Dan on the Danube. Then of course we have Linz. Now Linz, if you see that glass building, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but this one is Media Arts. And where our, where our ship docks, in the evening, it lights up. You'll see that because you can see it's right across from the river. And you can see all the colors as it changes colors. Oh, my goodness. And on our, our minutes, right? Well, in Linz, you can do a half-day Linz, a half-day Crespi, or a, a full-day Salzburg. Right? And also, we offer a half-day Salzburg. Many people regret taking the half day Salzburg. I have to tell you. Okay. The Salzburg is such a beautiful city. And I have to say, in Austria, every time I'm in Austria, no matter what city it is, I have to taste the apple strudel because my grandmother was so Austrian. She made the best apple strudel. And Salzburg is the place I found the most like my grandmother's apple strudel. Okay. And here's Kresge again. A another 15th, 13th century um, uh, city, and it's maintained that glory. And we climb, we go into the castle where you can see the whole area again and do a walking tour. It is lovely. Kind of brings you back and says, you either like it and you say, I want to live back then, or you say, I really do like my microwave and my dishwasher and my self cleaning oven. You know? But it's Great to go and visit. And then, of course, like the Rhine Gorge, we travel the Wachau Valley. And with the Wachau Valley, we do get another, your cruise manager will give you explanation of, of the region. I am terribly sorry that my, has my, my puppy dog does not climb stairs. So, sorry. And then we end up in Westenkirchen in Austria. And what that is, is another gateway city, right? It's a vineyard. We have some wine tasting there. And from there, we go to Dernstein. And you have some choices. You can climb up to that castle up here, the ruins, which was where Richard the Lionhearted was imprisoned. Uh, you have a wine tasting in Dernstein. And also do some shopping. And I want to tell you that this is the apricot capital of the world. And you have to buy apricot brandy. You have to buy you know, apricot liqueur. It's just amazing. And don't buy just one because you'll regret it when you get back to your, back home and say, I didn't want to buy two. Again, apricots. Then we travel to milk. And 
and milk. You could do a bike tour. You could do a wine excursion, or you could go, go up to milk to the Abbey. And every time I'm in the Abbey, it's a working Abbey, right? It is absolutely magnificent. And the library, I could spend hours in just looking at all the volumes. There are a million books in this library, a million. And then we head to Vienna, okay? Vienna, we offer Vienna um, where, where we docked, all right? We're not in the heart of Vienna because we can't. So we offer a bike tour. And you know what? If you'll excuse me for five, not even five minutes, for one minute, I will be right back. I'm just curious, has anybody been on an Ama Waterways tour before? Um, this is Gretchen responding. Um, I have not been on one, but I know um, several of our advisors have. They went on a, a, an inspection trip and absolutely loved it. Um, you know, with the, uh, like like Mary Margaret says, the choices of tours, um, the service, the food, all of that is 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 just um, top of the line. So um, I know that uh, Jill Ward in our St. Cloud office was one of um, the advisors that was on that. Uh, gosh, I wish I could think of some of the others, but if you- Well, you've you know, had several. Yes, you've had several. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, you're back, okay. I'm back and I apologize. That's profusely right. i'm sorry my <laughs> dog looking have... at the, my computer wondering <laughs> where's, that noise <laughs> where's the noise coming from yeah um well let's talk a little bit about vienna because vienna is the one city that we offer an optional tour so as i as i mentioned we're, the, we're in vienna probably for about a day and a half we arrive in vienna you have the bus that takes you into the city or you could bike into the city if you so desire and the bus will drop you off and you have the choice of staying in the city because the bus will make a circle every 45 minutes to an hour where you where the bus dropped you off, it will pick you up and you can come back to the ship. So I highly recommend you have lunch in Vienna. But with Vienna, you have the choice in the evening to do either the Strauss or the, in the Mozart concert or go back into the city in the evening. So again, and we offer that as a, an optional tour, the, the concert, because many people don't wanna do the concert or they've already done it. And they would much rather just, excuse me, go back into the city, you know, in the evening and enjoy the nightlife. Then after Vienna, we head to Boslava. And I'm so glad we added Boslava back into our uh, stops on the Danube because Baslava is actually known as the coronation city because between uh, 1530, 1515, I believe it is, and 1835, there were 12 coronations that happened in Baslava. And we have a great tasting there, delicious food, and you can do the castle hike. The castle hike, sometimes we, what we also do in Baslava is we'll make, take a bus and go up to the castle and we'll be entertained by dancers and also have some wine tasting as well. And then we go to Budapest. We never spend enough time in Budapest. Whether you're embarking or disembarking in Budapest, I highly recommend that you spend a couple of extra days in Budapest because it is a beautiful city. It's, it's a walking city as well. Um, and there's so much to do on the Buddha side as well as the Pesh side. And of course, the bridge that you're seeing is the chain bridge. And we give you some beautiful city tour. Yes, we go to Hero Square, Matthias Church, Castle Hill, but you never spend enough time there. And we also do an illumination tour. And you're on the sun deck no matter what time of the year you are on the sun deck outside, whether you're wrapped in a blanket or you know, just in the summertime, 
having a glass of wine, a cup of coffee, some hot cocoa, whatever it happens to be of your drink of choice as we're sailing on the back and forth on the, the Danube in this beautiful, beautiful city. It is gorgeous and fairly inexpensive. We disembark in Budapest and unfortunately go home. But we, in case you don't know, Ama Waterways was the only river cruise ship that was sailing uh, last summer. Uh, what happened was Ehoy, a tour operator out of Germany, contacted Rudy and Christine and said, I understand that you Americans cannot travel uh, to, to Europe, but I have Austrian, Swiss, and Germans that would love to experience a river cruise. They chartered the Ama Christina on the Rhine from July 5th to November 2nd. We have had to meet every single protocol of the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Belgium, Switzerland, Germany, Austria, right? Because those are the countries that we touched on the Rhine, right? My crew smiles with their, their face masks, right? Their face coverings. Uh, you would wear a face covering in our ship as you're going down to breakfast where your temperature will be taken every morning. Um, in our lobby area and the hallway. Um, temperature checks, as I mentioned, are by my crew all the time. Yours just on, as you're boarding our cruise. Now, these are the protocols that we had to follow this summer. I, we do not know what the protocols are going to be when we start to sail again, when we're allowed back into Europe, right? But um, when you arrived on the, on the ship, your temperature was taken, your luggage was sanitized before it was taken to your uh, stateroom. And your temperature, as I mentioned, is taken at breakfast, right? I've talked about our social distancing. Now, clean air, which is everybody's concern. Every, when Rudy has designed our ships, every single cabin, our hallways, our lobby, our lounge has got its own system. So you, our, our dining area, you don't have to, you're breathing clean air, you're not breathing anybody else's air. And what we did in our lounge, so you would not have to waste, uh, wear a face covering as we put the plexiglass between the couches and the chairs. So you can enjoy reading a book, having a drink, having a cup of coffee, et cetera, right? We do offer a travel waiver uh, plus insurance. It is separate from any travel guard or other travel insurance that you may have, which I highly recommend. It is available until January 31st for 2021 and 22 sailings, all right? But if you purchase uh, our travel guard through uh, Birch, it's $80 per person additional. If you pr purchase a third party insurance, whether it be through whatever credit card company or even through Birch, is $175 per person. But it's a cancel for any reason up to 24 hours prior to departure. We are offering some specials that I'll talk about. So if you travel solo, and many of many people do, yes, we are offering, we've always had a solo traveler program where it's 25% of the double rate for a category D or E, which is my fixed window, what I call my uh, swan level. But our special that we're offering through um, up to February 28th of this year, any balcony, 25%. Okay, so again, it's applicable on any of our 21 sailings. But because you were so kind to listen tonight, uh, you book any new 21 or 22 on the waterways journey with Burst Travel, right? your advisor there, by January 30th of this month, I will put an additional $100 per person discount on your invoice, right? So you have until the 30th, 30th of January. Doesn't matter which one. Now, we are, it's what we call in the, in the cruise industry, the first quarter is always wave season. And because First Travel is one of our wonderful partners with Signature, as well as that consortium, we are offering a special wave season promotion applicable from January 13th to Jan February 20th for any August through December 21 sailing, an additional 
$150 onboard credit per stateroom. Right, so again, that's over and above, and it's combinable with any of the amenity programs that, that we offer with Signature through Birch, as well as any of current promotions that we are offering, right? But it's valid from January 13th, which is tomorrow, to through February 20th. For those of you who have been on an ocean cruiser, I know they take you to beautiful countries, but my rivers, they take you through them. And the beautiful places that we visit, the cities, towns, villages, we do get up close and personal with them, okay? So thank you so very much. And if you've got questions, please shoot them. Thank you. Uh, I just much. wanted to say that, that I went on a, on a waterways cruise with my daughter a couple of years back and we did the uh the tulip time okay cruise and it was lovely and my daughter and i are both vegan and they made us the most delicious food something special for us at every meal it was just delightful oh I'm glad uh, yeah it Thank was you. lovely we had such a wonderful time uh one thing i might suggest is that you uh invest in some e-bikes oh no We've talked about that, and uh, Rudy, Christine, and Gary say, nope, there's too many accidents that happen on the e-bike. Yeah, right, all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Knowing how to ride a bike and being a bike rider are two different things, especially when you haven't done it for a long time. Anyway, that's all I got. Thank you. Well, come again. I plan to. Good. Anybody well, else? Well, Gretchen is going to tell you, what, if you think of questions in the middle of the night at three o'clock, don't call Gretchen and don't call me, but call your advisor. So Gretchen, take it away. <laughs> Are you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say that um, while I wrap, wrap up and tell you how to reach out to your uh, Birch or Pegasus um, travel advisor, if you think of a question, you can type it in the chat box and, and I'll take a look before we sign off. But again, thank you so much for um, participating tonight. It was fantastic. I don't know all the talk of food and wine has got me hungry and ready to go pour myself a nice glass of wine. But I certainly wish I was enjoying that on a lovely Alma Waterways cruise. Someday soon, we all hope. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. If you have questions and you need more information, please reach out to your Birch or Pegasus travel advisor. If you have their email, that's the best way to reach them. If not, um, you can call the office. Uh, we are open. Um, I don't know if at the beginning you heard some conversation with Fred, our owner, um, talking about the locations are all open. Some uh, locations are open by appointment only. We do have some limited hours. So I always recommend to email first or to call and um, make arrangements if you want to meet in person or virtually or just even discuss these things over the phone. And if you um, need the phone number or any information, you can go to our website, burstravel.com. Go to the locations tab. It'll list all of our locations there. And you can also fill out a contact us form. So if you just have some questions or want more information or you want somebody to reach out to you, complete that form and send it in and we'll get it to one of the advisors to get back to you. So we're here to help you any way we can virtually, um, you know, over the phone, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, we want to accommodate that and, and help you um, check availability book your trip or just start dreaming about a wonderful Ama Waterways cruise. So thank you again, everyone. Um, Mary Margaret, I'll let you wrap up. I don't have anybody in the chat, but again, if you have questions, um, reach out to our, your advisor and we will post this webinar on uh, the Burst Travel website under services and travel seminars. So if you have somebody that you know would be interested in learning more, have them uh, go onto the website. Uh, we'll probably have it up tomorrow at some point. So thank you. No, thank you very much. It was my pleasure.